Solomon's Outdoor Adventures. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures. Today we're going to go rock hounding and exploring Peavine Mountain located just north of Reno. So without further ado, let's do it. So geographically speaking, Peavine Mountain is the prominent mountain north-northwest of Reno, rising to an elevation of 8,269 feet. And in terms of geology, Peavine Mountain has a very colorful history, which is part of the reason why there are so many mines on Peavine Mountain and why it's such a good place to rock hound. So it all started 200 million years ago during the Jurassic period, which is the period that the oldest rocks on Peavine Mountain date to. Now these rocks form a volcanic slash metavolcanic unit called the Peavine Sequence, which is composed of rhyolites, andesites, and basalts, and other volcanic rocks that erupted during the Jurassic and have since been slightly metamorphosed due to regional tectonic processes. Next we have the Cretaceous-aged Sierra Nevada Batholith, which is a granodiorite, an intrusive rock, that formed about 140 million years ago in this location, and it intruded the Jurassic metavolcanic peavine sequence that was already here. Now, if you look at the map that I created here, you'll see that pretty much all of the mines on Peavine Mountain occur at the contact between the Cretaceous granodiorite and the Jurassic metavolcanic peavine sequence. Now, why is that? That's because as the granodiorite intruded the area, it brought up hydrothermally altered fluids with it that were carrying metals, such as copper, gold, silver, iron, etc., etc. And the lion's share of these mines on Peavine Mountain, as aforementioned, occur on the contact between the Cretaceous granodiorite and the Jurassic metavolcanic Peavine sequence. Now, the regional geology of the area after the mineral deposition is exposed very well on Peavine Mountain too. You see the red unit is Miocene volcanic rocks, which is andesite mostly, and then the brown is Miocene tuff. So these were all volcanoes that erupted during the Miocene. The Miocene epoch occurred from 23 to 2.6 million years ago, so these are volcanoes that have erupted in that time frame uh, here in Nevada, in western Nevada near Peavine Mountain. Um, this is all due to basin and range crustal extension, which is still going on today, which you see the Peavine Peak Fault on the northwest side of the mountain is an active normal fault. Uh, the Peavine Mountain itself has actually been uplifted about 2,000 feet due to faulting, and an earthquake of magnitude 6.0 is capable on this Peavine Peak Fault. So there you have it, just some brief geology of Peavine Mountain. Now let's go rock hound and explore, shall we? Yeah! But first, let's talk about some of the flora and fauna of Peavine Mountain, because Peavine Mountain is surprisingly one of the most biodiverse mountains in Nevada. Now, it is in close proximity to the Sierra Nevada Mountains, so that makes a lot of sense, but on Peavine Mountain you'll see pockets of trees like this mixed in with bare landscapes. So you have California white firs, Jeffrey pines, Sierra junipers, mountain hemlocks, uh, Sierra lodgepole pines, just to name a few species. And Peavine Mountain used to be extensively forested back in the 1800s, but a lot of those trees were cut down due to mining and have since not grown back as fast as we would like them to. However, Peavine Mountain does have a very diverse set of species that live on the mountain in terms of flora. And that's good because the forest is coming back on Peavine Mountain, um, at least partially, but hopefully in the future more extensively. All right, now let's talk about some common animals you can find on Peavine Mountain. There's a lot of elk, you can find wild horses, you can find mule deer, which is photographed here, and in terms of predators, you can find coyotes, foxes, mountain lions, bobcats. Mountain lions are a big one up here uh, to be careful about. And then you can also find black bears uh, on Peavine Mountain. They like to inhabit the area in close proximity to the Sierras, as you know. And in terms of birds, you've got a lot of eagles, a lot of songbirds, and a lot of hawks, just like this Cooper's hawk, which is photographed right here. All right, now let's get into the fun of the video and go rock hounding and exploring. Let's go! So Peavine Peak is located roughly 35 minutes from downtown Reno, and getting there is quite simple. You'll take US Route 395 for 8 miles north from I-80 until you get to the exit for Stead Boulevard, You'll take the exit for Stead Boulevard, 
and then you'll turn left on Stead Boulevard immediately, drive under the freeway, and then turn right on Virginia Street, continue on Virginia Street for honestly like 30 seconds, turn left on this unmarked dirt road, which is in fact Peavine Road, and then just continue up the dirt road um, until you get to the top of the mountain, or until you get to a place on the mountain that you want to stop at to try and have your adventure. So yeah. All right, here we are at a beautiful Peavine Mountain. We're about to go uh, exploring and go rock hounding. And the views out here are absolutely stunning. We're in a uh, alpine-ish meadow up here, complete with sagebrush and rabbit brush at about 8,000 feet of elevation. And I'm gonna turn the camera around so you guys can see what I'm seeing. So we're looking down north west of us right now. We see this extensive grove of California white firs, as well as aspens. And we're looking into California right now. These are the northern, northern parts of the Sierras and just stunning views. Now, Peavine Mountain was extensively mined back in the late 1800s. Uh, for basically any metal you could think of under the sun. Copper, silver, gold, tungsten, zinc, etc., etc. I think you mean any type of metal under the earth. <laughs> it's a good point. It's a great point. What she said, any type of metal under the earth. And um, there, as, as there are a lot of abandoned mines here, uh, there are some pretty cool places to rock hounds in the tailings of these mines. Uh, so let's see what we can find because there's actually an abandoned mine right here behind this aspen grove. So uh, let's check it out. So they call it the quaking aspen or the trembling aspen for a reason. As the wind blows, the leaves quake slash tremble. Uh, yeah, anyways, here's the tailing pile of that abandoned mine. So right here, we have a very interesting uh, outcrop of rock just above this abandoned mine. Very iron rich, as you can see. And if you look right here, you can kind of see some of that what looks like it could be some copper iron mineral uh, which is cool Let's see what else we can find all right so i found another outcrop of some really cool rock very iron rich and we see the green right here that's a uh, chrysocolla most likely uh, which is a copper ore so there's definitely copper in these rocks iron copper and a lot of times you'll get other metals that are more economic and worth more than just iron and copper in these rocks. So uh, let's see if we can find some, shall we? And you can see some very nice metal, metal coating here in these rocks. Probably just iron, um, but yeah, very cool. Indicative of more minerals. Oh, what's this? Ah, very cool. Very, very cool. That's all mica right there. Probably muscovite. And this is a volcanic rock. So we've got my muscovite phenocrysts right here. Awesome source. All right, so I've rounded up some interesting specimens. Here, this yellow is all sulfur. So that's pretty cool. Um, sulfides are a type of mineral where you get metals that bind with sulfur ions. And that's, you know, pyrite is a sulfide. Um, it's iron sulfide. And there's a litany of other sulfides that occur in metal deposits. So that yellow is just sulfur. It's residual from the sulfides. Here, we have something very interesting. We have little veins of silver, I believe. It seems like the miners uh, did not take those. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's probably a silver sulfide acanthite. Um, more credence to the sulfur. And then right here, we have a very interesting specimen. You see it's very shiny right here. It's all copper. So some nice copper ore right here in this abandoned mine on Peavine Mountain. It makes me sad that there are so many water bottles out here. I completely concur. If you guys come out here to have adventures, please clean up your trash um, so that future generations can enjoy it and so that animals don't get injured, so that you're not degrading the environment. It's very important to explore cleanly. Take only pictures and some rock specimens, if you want, and leave no trace. 
Pick up your garbage. Footsteps. That's the phrase. What's that? Take only pictures, leave only footsteps. What she said. She's a very wise woman. Yeah, I might read that out of a national park or something, probably. <laughs> yeah. We should bring a bag next time so we can clean up all the garbage. We really should. Into the woods we go, just like the play. Take only pictures, leave only trampled plants in your wake. More views of the area, looking north into California, the northern Sierras. Um, I wonder if we'll be lucky and see Lassen Volcano. I'm sure on a clear day you might be able to, depending on the angle that this view is at. Not seeing it right now, but looking down at some beautiful California white firs. Nice forest of them right here on the backside of Peavine Mountain, which Peavine Peak right up there, the radio towers. Taking the lower trail, we uh, accidentally took the higher trail that leads to nowhere. But here, just gorgeous views of the trees again. And as a self-proclaimed ecology nerd, I'm having a fun time right now looking at the different tree species. So uh, yeah, Peavine Mountain. What about those of us who aren't self-proclaimed geology ner ecology nerds? <laughs> Are we having a good time? I don't know, are you? <laughs> well, we have kind of gotten to the bottom of this little glen here, skirting it. And uh, the trail was very overgrown. So we had a nice little rock hounding sesh and really, really beautiful views of the forest. But I think we're gonna turn back and head back up the uh, hill, back to the car. And then we're gonna stop by and take a viewpoint of Truckee Meadows, of the valley that Reno is in and all the mountains surrounding Reno to the south of Peavine Mountain on the way back. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna walk the dirt road a bit to uh, get some gorgeous views. So looking east right now, we have a wonderful view of Sparks and the north end of the Virginia Range and the white over there at the base of those mountains in the distance, not in the distance distance, but in front of them, it's the Tesla Gigafactory and uh, USA Parkway. So we have a absolutely gorgeous view here. You're looking down into Reno, to the Truckee Meadows. The mountain range immediately behind Reno is the Virginia Range. And then behind it, you can see the Pine Nut Mountains, which are right behind the Virginia Range right there. And then in the distance, way over there, you can see the Wasuk Range, high point being Mount Grant, 11,239 feet. Looking south, we are looking at the Carson Range. Mount Rose is the high point of the Carson Range. Well, the high point of this part of the Carson Range at 10,776 feet. You've got Sunflower Mountain immediately to the right of Mount Rose. And we're looking down into the west part of Reno, Boomtown, Veridai, Mogul. You're looking at the crest of the Sierras way in the distance over there. Uh, and Donner Pass, which is world famous. Interstate 80 goes over Donner Pass and the Sierras there. Verdi Peak is this peak right here in the foreground. It's about 8,000 feet. Looking west, further at the high Sierra crest. And then this peak right here that you can see kind of to the north right before Peavine cuts it off is Babbitt Peak. It's where the crystal mine is. And that's just another uh, high point on Peavine Mountain here. So this is your view, looking west at the Sierras, Verdi Peak, Babbitt Peak, Mount Rose, the Carson Range, that would be south. And looking southeast towards Reno, the Virginia Range, the Pine Nut Mountains, and the Wasuk Range, way in the distance. Enjoying the view. Mm -hmm. Very pleased. Looks delicious. They do, don't they? Especially in this lighting. Wow. Doing a voiceover here because it was just too windy, but we went on a little rise just east of the previous viewpoint, looking over at downtown Reno and UNR just north of downtown Reno. And, yep, there's a zoom in of UNR. You can kind of make out the stadium a little bit, um, as well as the basketball arena. But, um... You're looking further east, and the furthest east mountains you can see on the horizon there are the Stillwater Mountains. So, all in all, just very, very beautiful views from the top of South Peavine Mountain, I believe that's what it's called, um, on Peavine Mountain. And you're looking down at Mount Rose and the Sierras yet again. So, again, just immensely beautiful views, guys. Highly recommend. Walking back to the car, some nice quartz that I found. Ooh, yeah. Quartz it is. 
Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures. If you enjoy content like this, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, and check out some of our other adventures right here. As always, guys, thanks again, and peace!